point of view. This is the Volvo XC90, the biggest model Volvo offers. 2015 this model or this design was introduced. It was the first Volvo to have this glorious new interior with the big screen in the middle. It also introduced the four headlights which now have become Volvo signature headlights across the model range really. Want to know what I think about the calm suite? Well, just watch the video. the obvious choice it is the 2 liter diesel with 173 kilowatts 480 newton meters of torque it does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.8 seconds now this is definitely not a fast car but i wouldn't call it slow either it's adequate it's just perfectly fine there are different engines available of course there is the petrol T5, T6, the hybrid T8 and as for diesels there is the T5 which I'm driving right now. The diesel is the obvious, reasonable and the logical choice for any buyer and there really is no reason to choose the petrol engine cars. This is the cheapest engine you can buy. It's cheaper than the T5 which is actually more powerful than this car. It's cheaper to run, the insurance is cheaper, it doesn't sound like a tractor even at the set of lights you really don't notice it it doesn't rumble it doesn't rattle yes if it was my money i would probably go for the t6 it's a bit more expensive but i like the oomph but for the rest of you if you just want to buy a volvo xc90 the d5 is the way to go now as far as handling is concerned well it's not as good as the bmw x5 for example but it's perfectly good and really I can't fault it because I know there is not so much feedback as there would be in a BMW but the steering is very nice and you can change it in different modes currently I'm in comfort mode if I go into dynamic mode the steering wheel gets harder I get more feedback and yeah it's really perfectly fine talking more about the driving modes you have this really nice feeling selector down here a drive mode selector if you push it options come up on the screen you get eco comfort off-road dynamic and individual they basically do what they say i think comfort is the best ouch see what i mean dynamic is too harsh comfort is just perfect this car has air suspension and yeah you really want to keep it in comfort in eco mode the car is something of a slough, you push the throttle, nothing happens, it is efficient and stuff and stuff but I prefer comfort mode. And yeah the air suspension does a really good job, you don't notice any bumps, it's like you're driving on a cloud. As I said acceleration is really adequate, I'm gonna put it in dynamic mode right now. Okay, flooring it. Not bad, really not bad. The gear changes aren't as fast as many other Germans, but they're very smooth and in the city you don't notice them on the highway, it's fast enough. I mean, it isn't a DSG, but it doesn't need one really. Now design-wise, on the outside, very Swedish, very clean looking, very nice. I really love the four hammerhead LED headlights. They turn and swivel and they're adaptive and stuff and yeah, they look good. They're very bright. They help you in the dark. Top notch, top notch really. As standard, 
in the momentum trim line the car gets eight, uh, sorry 18 inch no 19 inch the car gets 19 inch alloys uh, standard on the momentum if you get the R design or the inscription you get 20 inch alloys of course you can opt for bigger ones 21 I think maybe there's a 22 in there also they do they do look very good but you don't really need bigger than 20 and this car looks good with these wheels oh 360 camera love it absolutely love it it's it's just so seamless look at it even if I move come on you can basically drive the car just by using the screen it's really special it's really good in my mind Volvo currently makes one of the best interiors period I mean not only is it very nice to look at all the materials are soft it's well thought out everything works as it should of course there's no bad materials of course there's no rattles everything you touch you know somebody thought that yeah that should be here not there it's it's just simple logical and it works and I also love the big screen it's again it's not overdone I mean on the Tesla for example I think the screen is too big it's nippy it's fast it has a really good resolution it has the option of being in Estonian and I'm sure there are many many other languages also available you can have your navigation your music your settings whatever as you just saw the 360 camera is glorious it's just ah very good very good this car has the dark brown interior it's not my favorite I think I wouldn't buy a poo colored interior car myself having said that the tan interior as I'm gonna show right now is probably my my favorite interior colors of all time and having said that if you get the full white one oh it looks so nice and again so Swedish because if you get the white one everything is white even the steering wheel the headlining everything is white and it's just ah uh, looks so good I might be rambling on I think something bad something bad oh I wish the digital dashboard would be maybe a bit more configurable I mean you can't do much in this screen it is all digital so you could make it as Audi or Volkswagen group cars do so you can change everything but as it is right now it's more like the BMW line which means you just can't hmm. talking about the seats there are three options available if you get the momentum there are standard seats which are really not bad these are the comfort seats I think which you get if you get the inscription model and there are R design or sports seats which would be my pick if I had the choice coming back to the lines as I already said momentum inscription R design R design or inscription might be the way to go it's not that much more expensive than the momentum although even the momentum has a lot of kit as standard LED headlights cruise control that I think it's even adaptive in standard mode leather seats heated seats really a good stereo I think it was Harman Kardon as standard you really can't ask for more but if you want a bit more the inscription or the art design is the way to go and of course then you can add a bucket loads of options and I mean safety stuff tech stuff you can go really really expensive as this car sits right now I think I think it has most of the options and the price is looking at around maybe 90 95 thousand euros yes of course you get a discount when buying this car obviously but it's still a lot of money and yeah you have pilot assist which means the car basically drives by itself I'm gonna show it right now I'm gonna no wait this is the wrong one okay pilot assist is on so I have set it for 52 kilometers an hour I should probably slow down a bit 
let's make it 45 to be legal anyway as you can tell the car is steering by itself and it's really doing a good job it wants me to use the steering wheel from time to time but most of the time it can handle it by itself it has pedestrian safety warnings uh, rear traffic alerts adaptive cruise control blind spot assist lane assist um, uh, sign recognition assist basically every assist you can think of this car probably has them so 70 on the cruise control the, the car steers itself no problem and I actually trust the system in a Volkswagen car it's really hard to really trust the lane assist but in the Volvo it sort of makes you feel safe Powers and Wilkins stereo system oh my god that's a good stereo it's one of the best I've heard it's really crisp and the bass is so so thumping good you know it's again I'm gonna say it it's one of the best in the car industry right now sitting in the back there is loads of legroom as you might expect perfectly fine panoramic sunroof LED interior lights heated rear seats also this is the seven seater version which means you have seven seats aha a nice cup holder and the handrest the leather feels amazing by the way it's Nappa I think perforated to allow the ventilation and massage in the front a little Swedish flag like that and you can adjust the rear seat even if I use the closest setting on the back seat well it's usable you can have seven adults in this car and yeah it wouldn't be like a limousine but it would be possible you know I'm gonna make it in the middle something like that I'm gonna yep this one forward as well now to use the seven seat layout you just flip up the seat it isn't very dignified climbing back here but for the interest of buyers Ah. See? And I have plenty of legroom here. There is plenty of legroom in the second row. There is a lot of room in the boot. You have a cup holder in the back, some copy spaces. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I really do. It's usable. Now, about the boot itself. It is electric, of course, very fast, as you can tell. When the seats are folded flat, like that, there is a hell of a lot room in the back. Even if you use the seven seat configuration, it's, it's very usable. All four doors have keyless entry sensors. And this is the key fob. If you get the inscription model, they will match the leather on the key fob to the leather inside. So if you get a beige interior, a beige key. This is a really nice touch and the key feels just amazing in your hand. To start the car, you don't push anywhere. Foot on the brake, you twist this thing here. Ah, how neat is that? I'll quickly talk about the screen once more. If for example you want to adjust the temperature, just slide the temperature and it works like a charm. If you want to use heated seats, just push here. Ventilated seats, no problem. Heated steering wheel, yes please. So what do I think about the big Swede? It's a really nice car. Is it better than the XC60, the smaller 
version of this car basically the smaller brother of this car to say that anyway is it better i don't know if it was my money i would probably go for the smaller one but i don't need seven seats if you do need seven seats this is the way to go if i had to choose between the q7 or the x5 i really can't say but i'd be really tempted to go the xc90 route and if you're worried that the facelift will come along and it will depreciate like a bugger don't be the last generation xc90 was in production for 12 years do the math this one basically started selling in 2015 so it has three years on it currently the facelift might arrive somewhere in the beginning of 2020 but even if it does the whole layout it won't change some minor refresh details here and there but all in all it will stay roughly the same anyway guys thank you for watching this was my quick review of the volvo xc90 thank you for watching there will be new videos coming soon so tune in and subscribe and hit the bell button and and yeah see you again guys bye